Hey y'all, what's up? Thanks for watching another video from the Options of Millionaire community. I'm Andrew, and I've got a question for you. Do you ever have a problem identifying when to play breakouts or breakdowns? Do you have trouble identifying when the market's going to trend up or trend down, or consolidate or chop? Well, if you've answered yes to any of those questions, then this is a video for you. In this video, we're going to be discussing exactly how to identify the trend up days, trend down days, consolidation days, chop days, or at least how I go about identifying those particular instances using something I call the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule is a probability-based rule that allows me to assign probabilities on looking for the breakout, breakdown, rejection, or consolidation. And what it means is that 80% of the time the market consolidates and 20% of the time the market trends, whether it be a trend up or trend down. And what the 80-20 rule allows us to do is to assign those probabilities to us so we can look for playing puts at highs, calls at the low, instead of trying to play breakouts, because we do know that most of breakouts fail. Breakdowns and breakouts fail, and retail has a habit of trying to play those breakouts and getting reversed over and over and over again. So it would behoove you to learn how to identify when to play trend up breakouts, trend down breakdowns, and play the rejections off highs and bounces off the lows that is inherent with consolidation days. And in this video, I'm gonna do exactly that. So stick around and watch, and of course, as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please post them in the comments of this video, and I'd be happy to answer them to help you improve your experience with this video. So just as what the name, the 80-20 rule implies, 80% of the time the market consolidates, and 20% of the time the market trends up or trends down. And to start this conversation, I wanna go back to a consolidation day that we had on January 4th. And I've got a white vertical line here to indicate the market open at 0830 Central, 0930 Eastern Time. And I want to show you exactly how I go about setting this up. Now, before you do any of this, first you have to identify the morning high price and the morning low price. Now, what does that allow you to do? In my opinion, the market opening in the first hour of the day is a great example of what the intentions of the market are going to be that day. It is why I prefer to trade in the morning time and not trade in the afternoon because the morning represents the true intentions of the market and the last half of the day is usually susceptible to tail risk with news events, catalyst events, and erratic behavior to set up for the next session. So I prefer trading in the morning session because of this idea. So the first thing I need to do is figure out what the high price is and what the low price is of the day. It's basically the range of the price action so I can start to look to play off bounces and off rejections. Now there are a lot of different systems out there that use morning highs and morning low prices and a lot of them are really time dependent, which I personally think is a flaw. I think that's gonna keep you biased for a particular time that doesn't necessarily work a lot of the time. However, the notion of setting a high price and a low price works very well and I don't necessarily use a certain time to nail down those prices. So what I do is look at the price action itself. When the market puts in a pivot point to the upside, I draw a line. And when the market puts in a pivot to the low side, I draw a line here too. Now for the morning, this little drop right here, I'm not necessarily going to look at that because that was more of a stop run to flush out the stops before moving back up. But I want to see, you could see here, this candle rejected four times right here. So I set a low price here and the market bounced up. Now, once I have these prices, now try to forget about this price action here because obviously the situation would be happening dynamically and I'd be watching this come up here, boom. Once I saw a rejection come down, I would go ahead and put a line there. That's a major pivot for me. Coming on down here and once I see this start to bounce, bounce, bounce and move around, I'm gonna set a line here and then right about this area, somewhere between the first 25 to 40 minutes of the day, somewhere in there, I know the market's gonna set those prices and that's gonna allow me to cage my expectations and start looking for the move. Now, having said this, I'm sure you're asking, well, what do you do the first 30 minutes? You just sit on your hands and watch? Yeah, 95% of the time, I'm not taking the trade the first 30 minutes of the day. Why? Because that price action is usually pretty volatile and pretty erratic, and usually it results in getting reversed or some quick profits. So I, I usually stay out of the market the first 20 to 30 minutes of the day. Okay, so now I've got the high price here, and I've got the low price here. And now I'm gonna play off of that. So from here, I start to see wick, wick, wick. I see four candles that respected on here. And I see obviously a large bottom wick hammered candle under increased buy volume here, VPA, above of this level. And then we form. So right about here, I'll be looking to take a call as we start to form a base simply because of volume price analysis. And then we start to head back up. Now here is where we start to figure out, are we going trend up? Oh, this is gonna blast and keep on going? Or is this gonna reject and come back down and, turn and just have a normal consolidation day 80% of the time? Well, probability states 80% of the time that we're gonna reject, right? Well, I'm going to naturally be looking for rejection points to take a put off here because probability speaking, we are not gonna blast and go higher. So I need to see how the price action is going to react around this level. 
So obviously we get a breakout here. Now by principle, I never want to play the initial breakout. Why? Because 80% of breakouts fail. This thing's going to pop up here. I don't want to be chasing this. Typical retail would see this breakout, have FOMO for missing the big trend up. They would enter calls, get reversed over and over and over again. We get reversed and you're going to take significant losses on these calls getting reversed like that. If this was to be a trend update and I wanted a play call to the upside, I would want to wait for the retest. So we come up here, we come down. I already know from this high price that this is going to be a good area and a good determination if we're going to bounce and go higher or fail and go lower. So a good call entry would be on the retest of this prior level. You can make a call, you could scalp, but obviously on this one, we fail and go lower. So you can already see this morning high price. They are using this morning high pivot to enter the consolidation area. Now this is where we have a potential trend update because we did go above it, fails into a consolidation day. Now in my opinion, if the first retest bounces off of this level and then fails, I would bet my bottom dollar that it's gonna be a consolidation day. So all right, so we fail back down, we buy back up, and once again, we reject this high level again, right back off, right back into consolidation day. So now I have an even greater confidence that we're gonna be a consolidation because we've already failed back inside this little high price. We have the low price, and now I'm gonna be looking for calls at the lows. And precisely, we come down here. We didn't quite get all the way down there, but once I'm using VPA to see bottom wicks forming under buy volume pressure coming in, I'm gonna take long calls, close them at the highs, come down, retest, close them at the highs. And you could see, as long as you're using this principle of the consolidation with the high and the low, you can make great money. You could have took put here, call here, put here, call here, put here. This system of identifying, correctly identifying, and playing consolidation and having the guts to take calls at the low and puts at the high will keep you profitable. Now I'm gonna add on one more thing on top of this. Theory is easy, execution is difficult. Now it's easy to identify this stuff. Now the problem with retail, the average investor, is that once they see all this red coming in here, they start getting bearish. Don't they start looking for brownie. puts, they start looking for the wipeout. Is this gonna sell off to 3780, et cetera, et cetera. Instead of looking to play calls at the low, which is a precisely, from a probability standpoint, 80% of the time, precisely what you need to do. Calls at the low, come up here, and you need to be looking to close out at the highs. Forget about the big wins. What if I hold a call and this thing goes to 4,000? Forget about that and play probabilities. This system will help you identify those probability entries and exits and make you more money. Now let's take a look at a trend breakout. Now let's start the breakdown here. So we have the opening candle here, and then I have got a white line representing the open, 0830 central time. And right out of the gate, we get this big red sell-off candle. Ooh, big and spooky, right? We get this big red day. It's time to blast through the four. Well, not so much. A little side note, by the way, if I see a big candle like this right out of the gate, most of the time, I'm looking to reverse that baby, whether it be big green or big red. Usually this big suction right out of the gate to one side will create a vacuum that will fill back up or back down if this is green. So I love to reverse these type of opening moves right out of the gate. So what am I going to do here? Right off the bat, I'm going to look to start setting the lows of the day. All right, so a few candles in, we start to bottom wick off this candle. I'm going to put a low right down here. And that's going to be my low of the day price. And we start to bottom wick off of there. We have one bottom wick. We have two bottom wicks. And now we have green volume coming in here. And by the way, on this particular instance, I did go long calls off this candle. And I closed up here for a nice little gain. But that's another story. All right, so we start making this move. We've got our low price in here. And now I want to start looking for where this thing is going to fade out. Is this, in fact, going to be a trend back down after all these positions close their shorts? Or is this going to come back up or consolidation day? I don't know yet. Now, there is a variable to this we haven't yet discussed, and that is market awareness. I do have prior YouTube videos about market awareness. I highly encourage you to go take a look at. Now, market awareness is a big part of this. I've got seven other charts up on other monitors that have Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, the yields, the VIX, the financial sectors, the X sectors, everything. And I'm showing what this thing's doing. So if there is a large bullish action in the entire market, then that's going to give me a hint that maybe this might be a trend up day. Or if everything is red and selling off, maybe this is going to be a red trend down day and this is going to flip back down once this kind of stalls out after the short covering. So market awareness is a key, key part of this and it should be part of yours if you want to be a profitable trader to developing sentiment. Okay, so knowing all that, I see the price action start to come up and I'm looking to put in the high of the day. So like I said earlier, about 20 to 40 minutes into the market open is when I'm going to start looking for the market to start putting in that range. And here we're off right off the bat, we start to see that. So here about just about right about top of the hour, give or take here, I see top wick, I see top wick right around this end. So I'm going to put one right about here and we start to drop here. We start to jump up and quickly we buy back up. And now after the first 20 to 40 minutes of the day, I'm going to be looking to start making some trades and figure it out. So I need to determine, is this going to be a trend up day? Is this going to be a range day or is this going to reject and come all the way back down? And just like before, you need to wait 
for the retest of prior levels the prior pivot levels never play the initial breakout so if you see this boom don't be the jabroni don't that puts on a jabroni. call here and tries to play the initial breakout wait for the retest the retest will save you from being reversed it'll do one of two things it'll increase your profits when you're right because you're buying at the lows it'll decrease your losses when you're wrong because instead of taking a call up here you'll take a call here and if this were to continue to drop your losses would be a lot less than taking it up here and you could close out once you see that failed so it's going to help you both ways so wait for the retest we get the breakout a couple of red candles retest this prior level once it starts to base and flips green we start to go long, and this is precisely where I longed ES futures on this particular day. I did exactly that. And we came up here, popped, we started to sell off here, and as long as we held this level, I am still maintaining my long position. Now, obviously, I'm watching the rest of the market. I'm watching XLF and tech and everything start to rage, so I'm pretty confident in a long here. And as long as it held this prior level, I'm holding my ES longs. If it falls below and goes inside of a consolidation day, I'm closing out those long positions because probability says, 80% probability says, once we break down in here, that my position of a long ES is no longer a valid position. So I'm gonna get out. So we hold just above this level, we finally start come up here and look what happens. I get a nice, nice profitable trade on some ES longs, judging by rules, not emotions, not, not praying for a win, just looking for a nice base off the top and goes up higher. If you use these rules, I promise you, I promise you, you could start to identify these particular instances a lot more accurately and drive consistency. You'll also help you identify the breakouts a lot earlier and hold this position for a lot longer. Now, notice what I didn't say. I'm not looking for longing an ES down here at the bottom and hold it the entire day. That's what everyone hopes for. Man, can you imagine if you held calls from the bottom? No, because that is not practical, nor is it responsible. That would be a complete luck of the draw for you to long a call and hold it the entire day. So taking a call here or long ES here is a lot more safe and responsible and analytically correct than taking a call at the bottom. Now let's take a look at a trend down day. All right, nice little trend down day. Obviously, you can see that this thing was substantially red throughout the entire day. So how do you identify went to take the position and write it down. Same concept, right? So right out of the gate, we get this open right here at 8.30. 9.30 Eastern time, we come down here, we start to pivot back up, so right off the bat, I'm gonna set me a level here, low price. We're gonna come up here, and then right about the top of the hour, somewhere in this ballpark, after a pivot, I'm gonna set me a high price. And this is the first 20 to 40 minutes of the day we have this nice little high price. Uh, we sit here, we base, right off the bat, we get this nice red candle, drop, 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 and we start immediately testing the low of the day and we waste no time breaking it boom we break through but look what happens we get this green candle immediately and this is the important part right here so obviously we come down here and if you're looking to take a call up to the upside or sell off or whatever it is this is the important part we come down to the prior line the prior pivot point and immediately when breaching it we get this green candle right back up to the line 4015 boom green candle right back up but what happens the sellers wick it down close it barely green and then the next candle which would be my confirmation candle it's two to three candles we get this big sell off and then down we go and this candle right here is where i want to start looking at shorting the second we take out the prior candle right here to simple vpa that's where i want to start shorting the market or taking puts we have a breakdown and then down we go now this would be the retest just like on the trend up day when we went higher retest it and then went higher and i took on the retest this is the retest breakdown retest of the level enter the put enter the short and then down we go now holding the position the entire time that's a different story altogether and there's going to be another video explaining cycles explaining how the market goes level to level which will help you hold the trade longer but all in all if you can use these levels it'll help you identify the pivots in the market i promise you the opening high low of this market is an incredibly strong pivot in the market and this ties into the level to level trading video i posted a couple weeks ago about the other dynamic levels in the market, which is the prior high low, the overnight high low, and then the current day's high low, which we're talking about here. Because those are incredibly strong levels in the market that the computer algorithms set in the market. And if the markets are telling you information, hey, Pete, the investor, this is where I wanna bounce, this is where I wanna reject, then we need to make note of that because that's going to be very, very pertinent information for our strategy, and it's gonna help you drive consistency. And now I wanna show you one last example. Now I picked this example because it's a tricky one. This has a trend down morning and a trend up afternoon, which is something we don't see very often, normally associated with the V recovery. Now, how do you identify those V recoveries? Well, I'm gonna do my best to show you exactly how to do that. So identifying the morning, just like we did in the prior couple of examples, we have the opening candle right here. We come up, we pivot, so right off the bat, 
we are going to put a line right here as our top pivot. We come down, the market bounces. Here's about the first 20 to 30 minutes of the day. Uh, 40 minutes a day, we're going to set a line right here. The market bounces and comes up, not quite makes it, fails, comes down, bounces up again, off this line, comes up, fails, retests it, consolidates one, two, three, four candles on the low again before eventually failing. Now, you want to play puts on this breakdown for sure. But then the market starts to bounce, comes up, retests this level once again. This will be the first, second retest. Fails, comes back down, bounces up again. Now you can also use a pivot level down here, by the way, for a bounce and another bounce here, but that's not the purpose of this video. That would be included in the level level trading video we talked about earlier. But we do exactly that. We bounce up, we come up, we test this level once again. This will be now be the one, two, three, four, fifth test of this prior pivot level. We come back down. And then finally on the sixth test of this level, we break and go higher, fail, come back down for a seventh test of this level. And then we finally go back up. You could maybe call that an eighth test, but that's a little too uh, much margin there to think about an eighth test. But you could see that this, once you identify and calculate this level, it's a very, very accurate representation of where the market wants to set these supply and demand zones. But we finally come up after multiple tests of this level, breach back above it, start to form a base, and now we go higher. Now this, turns in, this starts turning into a trend up afternoon, which back inside the consolidation range. And then look where we reject. Boom, we come up to the morning high, reject, come back down, come up, breach it by a little bit, but otherwise consolidate right at this level before once again falling, coming on back down, and then bouncing off this level once again. Now look how accurate these two levels are. Just all it is is a simple morning high, morning low of this 20 to 40 minute range in the time of the morning, letting the market figure out where the market wants to pivot itself before you jump in too early. And look how accurate. This was the entire day. We had this nice little trend down morning, followed by this trend up afternoon via recovery that allow you to play off this levels. Now a great level play off of this would be right here. Down here, if you could play the dynamic level. Now this bounce would have been very difficult to accurately notate and enter because it bounced after a nice little sell off. However, this one, because if you put a dynamic level, this one would have, break, would have been a great entry. Bounce back up and then here you'd be looking for another bounce somewhere in here. But after we consolidate back above this line and start bottom wicking, bottom wicking, bottom wicking with more buy volume coming in, you can see the difference in volume between mostly red here, mostly green here, and then finally we go higher, you could use this level to long off of that. And as long as you're playing level to level and being emotionally void and then actually playing these levels from a probability standpoint, it can help you drive a lot of consistency. Anyway, that's pretty much all I got. That's really all it is. Try to plot these levels, these morning highs, morning lows, anywhere between 20 to 40 to 45 minutes of the morning, pretty much wherever. It's not really time dependent. It's wherever the market wants to pivot, and it'll tell you most of the time. Sometimes it'll be a little iffy and a little harder to identify, but most of the time, it's easy peasy to identify where the market wants to pivot, and it'll help you drive a lot of consistency. And that's all I got for you. If you like this channel, please hit like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments in the video if you like this or any other video if you have any ideas or comments or criticisms. I'll be happy to answer your questions and have a little conversation down in the comments of this video. Also, check out my podcast on Spotify, the Making Millionaires podcast, soon to be coming to Apple podcast once I get some logistics figure out. And then, of course, come over and join the Discord, the Options Millionaire Discord, fantastic resource, communal resource where we can discuss all things investing day in and day out, have a little fun, and make a little money along the way. I appreciate y'all taking the time to watch this video. Until next time, I'm Andrew with the Options Millionaire community, and I'm out. See you.